but we're early. Okay. So we will uh, start things up here at, as soon as it hits 11. There's a few people showing up. Welcome. We're, uh, we got a new buffalo, or a couple of them. <laughs> so you gonna, can see their hooves. <laughs> so we're getting a snowy, uh, like you're just saying, it's snowing in Colorado. So already snowed in uh, Montana. Yeah. Yeah. So we're here in uh, Omaha. So we're right on the Missouri River, and they're very concerned about uh, flooding. And so when Montana got that big snow, they're like, oh no. We haven't, we haven't quite fixed everything down here yet. It's a lot of water. I mean, did you drive down there? Uh, I drove I-29. And I-29. It's like a lake. Oh, I feel like so driving, sorry for those people. Through the Everglades. Okay, it's 11 o'clock. We're going to get started. Um, so this is a, a marketing automation webinar. So in a perfect world, you guys have uh, questions, but we've run these before and there's not uh, people are watching or listening and uh, not necessarily asking, maybe they don't have a ton of questions, don't know what to ask yet. Um, use the chat functions to ask the questions. There's also a Q&A function in which I can see open questions. Um, we'll answer them along the way, but Bill is going to play the role of person who asks questions. And so he did take a peek. He wasn't gonna come in completely uh, <laughs> uninformed, but as we're rolling it through, I'm going to share, uh, just roll through this PowerPoint. And uh, if you have questions, stop me along the way. But this is uh, the, I'm using a new remote thing here. Automate your marketing and lead generation. So today, what, it's real quick, we're gonna get on the same page when we say uh, marketing automation, what is it that we mean? Uh, we're going to talk about the promise of this because there's a lot of people out there telling you that it's going to change your business. We can tell you from experience what actually happens. And uh, we'll talk about along those lines. We'll talk about the pitfalls of automation. And then we'll peek at some of the tools. We have um, tools like uh, Keep, which used to be Infusionsoft, SharpSpring, GreenRope. Um, MailChimp has a bunch of automation features on there. So we'll just take, I took some screenshots of that. And if you have deeper, darker questions about how exactly all this stuff works, um, by all means, uh, ask away. And I may be able to even uh, pop into the uh, application myself. And so then, and then we'll have an open Q&A. So how does that sound? That sounds great. You know, the first thing that come, comes to mind is marketing automation. That's pretty broad, right? We hear a lot about it. <clears throat> I'm assuming you'll go into what actually is automated. Yeah. What we can automate. I mean, not like videos or things like that, but it's certain things that can be automated. Yes. And, okay. And then if you have more questions along the way, uh, don't ask know. them. <laughs> no, go ahead and go ahead and ask because um, <laughs> the reason we're into this is because predictable lead generation is our business. So when we say predictable lead generation, we're talking about, uh, being able to forecast and not just revenue, but forecast the number of leads that come through our business, which is something we've been striving for for going on 20 years. Yep. Um, because predictable revenue leads to higher business valuations. Your business is just worth more to banks, to uh, potential buyers, to anybody. If you can show them that you have a steady flow of leads coming in with or without you, and that lets you attract better talent, uncover better opportunities, and money to fuel growth. So as Bill would nod his head here because he helped me put this together, um, marketing automation is a big piece of this because one of the things that happens inside of uh, generating leads is a lot of people aren't ready to talk to anybody. So how is it that you keep them in the funnel and engaged uh, while you're moving forward? So. Marketing automation, the definitions, I just ripped these off of uh, Salesforce's website. It's a technology that makes, ma manage, manages your marketing processes and uh, at any stage of the customer decision process. So automatically, it's without human intervention. And the, the goal is to make it easy, but also to reduce human error, which seems to be Silicon Valley's goal. Hey, but you know, if it, if it helps us, uh, we should take a look at it, right? Um, the consistency of a robot, what I mean by that is when I look at these tools, one of the things I notice is that uh, when you give somebody something to follow up with and you say, you know, we should probably follow up with them three or four times, and then we send a couple emails 
And then the, as a human being, you look at that and you're like, oh, I'm probably bugging them. Timing might not be right. The, you know, the, I have a bunch of reasons why follow-ups three and four may never happen. Uh, robots make sure they do happen. So uh, the robots don't care. Robots don't care, right? <laughs> right. And so I mean, when you see these stats and it's like, oh, you know, we increased uh, appointment setting by 22%, chances are there was a human that if the human would have done it, they would have gotten the same results. They aren't doing it. And so marketing automation is to help with those things. Right. Um, but we'll talk about that too. So what are things that can be automated? I'll kind of pop these up really quick. Um, the analytics tracking, anything that has to do with uh, keeping track of where people are at in your system, that can be automated. Emails, your ad management, uh, going back and forth, uh, turning things up and down, scheduling, <clears throat> a lot of content scheduling if you do that on your websites. Scoring of your leads, like uh, trying to figure out which ones to follow up on, which ones not to follow up on or how to prioritize those. The status of the lead, uh, moving it be from one uh, you know, super cold to cold or something like that, the, the robot can do that for you. Um, you can track your customer journeys if you have those mapped out, if you know how your customer makes those decisions uh, to work with your firm, you can uh, automate that, uh, moving the customer along those journeys. Website management, social media management, and, and a lot of offline things, which is what we see like MailChimp may be all online in your email and that's where it does most of its automation. But if you want people to follow up with calls, if you want uh, periodic mailers to go out, if you want to send texts, if that's part of your business, uh, people to make calls, that can all be controlled inside of, of these systems. So does that make sense? Yes. As to what this is? Um, the reason it's important is because sales cycles are changing, right? If this was an old sales cycle, they have marketing, right? Uh, AIDA, uh, generating a little interest. And then as soon as the people take action, they're usually working with the salesperson. Salesperson was holding all the information inside of your company as to what the best, how to make the best decision inside that company, right? Uh, some people were good at it, uh, better than others. Some people right. were bad at it, right? So it wasn't like every salesperson was perfect. Um, now what we're seeing is that marketing is still doing the AIDA piece of it, but customers aren't talking to uh, salespeople until really late in the sales cycle. So they're making, the customers are kind of making decisions along the way. So when we look at that gap, this gap was controlled by your seller's skill. This gap is at best, we could say it's controlled by that darn internet, right? It's uh, as a consumer, I feel like I can find as much information as I need to find in order to make a decision. And so the salesperson gets a little handicapped in this process. Um, if they're being reached out to cold. Yeah, that's interesting when you look at the darn internet versus something that we control. It's almost like don't even be afraid of what's out there, of other content, right? I mean, it's because if they're going to research, right? let them go, let them research, let them, do, and, but if you can control some of the message, that's ideal, but it's also, it's okay if we go someplace else, if it's, you know, but just, yeah. just make sure content that you have on your website or that you can control can answer a lot of the questions that they have. Right. Right. And your salespeople, you need to train them. Uh, we see a lot of salespeople training. We do a lot of marketing stuff, but salespeople training where you've got to teach them almost how to be doctors. Like if people come in and, and it's, Hey Bill, you know, my elbow hurts. And I think what I need is a, uh, I need a cortisone shot. The, do right. the, do the doctor right. shouldn't say, Oh, okay. How'd you find that out? Oh, I went to Google and WebMD. They should, and they usually do say, ah, well, before we do that, you know, that sounds like it's a possibility. Sure. Tell me more about your elbow and what was happening before. So that's, uh, that's a new salesperson thing. We're not going to be covering that because what we're talking about is how do we bridge this gap where before we could have done it with training our salespeople. Now we need to do it. Uh, we need to automate it or okay. we, we can't automate it. We do it through marketing. Coupled with this, so I'm going to throw up a slide here because one thing that we bump into at uh, Lead Gen Compass is we uh, work with a lot of small companies. And small companies to us are defined as under 50 employees, under 100 employees. So that kind of, um, that world, when we look at this world, so I pulled this from the latest NICS. <laughs> it looked like a government site. <laughs> I should probably have double checked it before I threw it up, but I was excited to make a pie chart. Um, 
but basically when I look at this, I thought, where, there we go. Hey. The, this is the number of businesses, right? So when you look at, they had a list of, uh, the government says there's 16 and a half million businesses out there. We say 10. Right. Um, but inside of there, the interesting thing is under 50 employees is like 80% of yeah. the companies that are out there, regardless of how you break it down. It's uh, 8 million of the companies in our database. It's a lot more, but under 50 employees, there's a good chance that you don't have full-time marketing people or a full-time marketing person. More often than not, it's like this manufacturer I was just talking to, he's got 50 people on the floor helping pack and get things out the door. He's got two salespeople out in the field. He helps with sales and his inside salesperson is also his customer service person is also his marketer. And so who's in charge there and how are they making decisions? You know, it's a small company. Everybody's kind of on, on board. Marketing automation helps when you don't have full-time marketing staff. If you don't have 50 people working on marketing, this helps give you a half a person, an, an admin, uh, somebody that helps you keep things moving um, in your system. 80 to 90% of businesses, we're all wearing multiple hats. Right. And from product development to marketing to sales to answer the phone. Right. Right. So this is technology that helps us get yeah. a little bit more done okay. um, during the course of, of our time. So common questions that we get. So these are common questions about uh, marketing automation. And essentially the first one is, well, uh, marketing automation, like, like that manufacturer, when I was talking to him about lead generation, he's like, uh, you know, it's kind of my salespeople's job to generate their own leads. My market, I've got a part, you know, she kind of does marketing part-time. She's a really good job, but she's inside sales. So she kind of generates her own leads. And then people just find us. Yeah. Right. So this is the whole discussion. But what he's really saying is I don't really have anybody. Like there's no buddy to do this. So how would I get any of this stuff done? And it's outsourcing, right? There's a, a, a million ways to get things done, you just need to know what it is that you're asking for. It's kind of like when uh, we use Upwork a lot to have people fill out projects for us. And in those projects, the best Upwork engagements that we have, and Upwork.com being one of these freelance marketplaces, the best engagements we have are the ones where we can really define what it is that they're supposed to be doing, right? So if you can, if you know what you want your marketing automation to have automated, that's really the, the key to it. If you don't have anybody doing marketing, this is where these tools get oversold because the idea is, well, you aren't doing anything. Maybe you should be doing it. Well, the truth is, is if I'm not doing it, then I'm really, I'm not doing it. And so it all needs to be invented. And we'll talk about that as we uh, go down the path. Bill's already seen my slide that I have to show here in the future. But um, essentially, I would argue that's a pitfall of the technology is it does promise that it's gonna fix a bunch of stuff. But if you're not doing it, uh, I don't know that it needs to be done, right? Right. You're already kind of getting by without it. Um, second question we get, this is usually from the marketing people who are looking at it, is, is this going to replace me? And probably there's a good chance. No, not unless you're very, not unless you are a robot. I'm an eighties guy. So when I'm in, in all my ad agency classes in college, that was when Apple came out and, and you know, the thing, and, oh my gosh, the, the ad agency is going away. Yeah. I mean, that was the conversation. And we thought all ad agencies were just going to, because everybody's just going to hire their own. All it did was create more jobs. Yeah. You know, it just created more for an agency to be able to do. It created more that the client wanted done. It's kind of the same thing. Will this replace my marketing person? No. As a matter of fact, <laughs> it'll keep that marketing person really focused and be able to accomplish a lot. Right. Right. So it's, it's uh, the marketing person becomes a boss of, a very literal child because <laughs> that's about what these things are. Right. They're not, you can make them uh, pretty advanced. They say that, you know, oh, AI this and AI that. Um, for most companies, the way that marketing automation works is uh, not that sophisticated. You need a lot of data in order to make that stuff work. Uh, but actually probably this should have been probably the number one question is how much, how much is this? And it goes from, uh, the range is anywhere from, you can do, there's a few plugins. If you have WordPress site, you can kind of cobble together your own marketing automation okay. pieces where you can automate part of your marketing using free tool, you know, like the free account at MailChimp and a few of these 
uh, tools up to, I'd say for like a single user on some of the bigger platforms, you're looking at three, 400 bucks a month. Okay. Um, and then more if you have a larger organization. So I'm still gearing this towards a smaller organization that has not been messing around with uh, marketing automation. What I do, and what's funny is when I bump into bigger companies, uh, under 250 employees, uh, under 500 employees, a lot of times they have these tools installed, but nobody's using it. Right. It got right. set up by some marketing agency and then it's uh, been kind of abandoned or left behind and we don't remember what it was, why it was that we bought it in the first place. So how does it pay off or when does it pay off? That's kind of, that should all be done. Um, if, if you're doing this right, you can get it, you can get a good guest going on paper. So if you need to invest $5,000 in a, an advanced system, what are you going to, what is it going to have to do in order to pay for itself? And how much time do you have to put in, you know, what do you have to well, do, right? Uh, uh, to make sure it's all set up properly and how much time maintenance, uh, new content, whatever the case may be, there's still a role. It doesn't replace anyone. <laughs> the and robot it needs direction. Lot, right? It creates a right? lot more work. Yeah. So how long does this take to implement and how hard is it to keep up? If those are the questions, right? So Bill just would have been asked because it really is the question. And the truth is, is if you think about if you brought somebody in off the street today, we just hired a couple new people. If you, uh, how long does it take for them to become productive employees of your company? And so even in defined roles, it seems like six months yeah. is pretty common before everybody kind of understands what it is that they're supposed to be doing, both from the employee standpoint and the uh, management standpoint. So if you can get something going inside of six months and see some wins, you're probably in pretty good shape inside of a year before you start generating a return on investment is, uh, I don't think that's uncommon. And then who can you hire for 5,000 bucks a year that you have to, right? It's kind of like an, uh, an intern that you bring in, right? They're going to be part-time. The, a college kid who's super smart that you tell exactly what to do, it, it, the, they can still, they're going to get a lot done. It's not necessarily going to be the most important things that move your business forward. So what are, how do we find those activities and get those programmed and tested and started to run? Uh, that's a way to think about marketing automation. Well, and to stick with that example, how long to, to implement, how long to see an RO, a positive ROI. It's the more planning you do, the more, the, 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 the more visible the map uh, that you create. And when that person is hired or when you buy the software, whatever the case, the more you know exactly how you're going to use it, what the, what the objective is, why you want to use it, the ROI, the, 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 not only the implementation, but the results will probably happen sooner than if you buy the software and then you start, okay, now why did I buy this software? And, and you know, do the planning first. Right. Right. You know, yes. And, Man, I wish I would have put my cool yeah. slide next because. <laughs> but, See, I'm. <laughs> but you know, well, it is. That, I really don't remember these slides. <laughs> so yeah. you just didn't want to be tripped up by anything. <laughs> the um, and, and we'll cover it in just a minute. But the uh, the trick to using any of this stuff is it, it's this old fashioned. It's kind of like using if you've listened to any of our, our previous uh, webinars, and uh, we've talked about like ad, like how do you use AdWords and how do you design campaigns. It's if you get it done on paper first, yeah. then everything goes much better going forward. Hiring a new employee, if you know exactly what it is they're supposed to be doing and you can set those expectations, uh, it tends to go better than yeah. if you just bring somebody in and say, we'll figure this out. Um, a lot of software seems to get brought in that way. So, right, okay, that, we, we all get that. Greg, uh, what is it that uh, we could do to get started? And uh, that's a great question, and it's getting much more complicated. I pulled this off of the MarTech Advisor, Chief MarTech, uh, Marketing Technology. And so right now we call it the, Mar the Mar your MarTech stack. What, it, what kind of stack you have going uh, for, your, for your MarTech, your sales and marketing technology stack? And back in 2011, there was a half a dozen companies that were starting on, I mean, a lot of people were automating, but marketing as a function was always kind of at this a little bit of this like, uh, magic soup like what did the marketers really do i don't know that we can really it they're so uh you know create creative yeah. how do we automate any of that stuff well as we've all adopted more technology right 2011 the iphone's only a couple of years old a couple uh 
companies there. Right now, it kind of shifted. I don't know if you can see that, but it goes from like marketing. Those are all like marketing automation and uh, uh, integrated marketing tools. And then they start being split off. 2017, there's literally thousands of companies out there that are doing some form of marketing automation. And uh, everybody's out there banging around, sending you emails yeah. and telling you that they've got the solution. And the best part of 2017 you have all these options. The worst part of 2017, you, you have, have all these, these options, options, right? Right. <laughs> so the way to get started is if you can start thinking of marketing and uh, get your marketing team on inside of some sort of framework as to how is it that uh, we break up our marketing piece. Um, this is not the sales piece. If I would have drawn it after SQ leads at the end there, there would be a whole, the whole sales cycle. But this is just marketing stuff. And suspects, right, using old old school uh, sales language, your suspects and your prospects. Your suspects are the things you find on lists, right? It's, uh, it's my chamber directory. It's my uh, every accountant in uh, the Omaha metro area. It's the ads I run, right? It's people coming in, but we're still, we're not sure that they're qualified. MQ leads is our marketing qualified leads number, right? That's the, um, I'm up more from a sales background. And I went to work inside of a big company and uh, I was officing right next to the director of marketing. And so the director of marketing and I had a very friendly relationship, but then we'd get into these boardroom meetings and basically the finger would come out and he'd say, we're generating tons of leads, right. blah, blah, blah. And I'd have to say, they're terrible. Like they're terrible leads. And what's bad about them? And I'd have to- What walk. every sales manager would say. Yeah, so uh, I'm assuming that our microphone's still on. Hello, hello. Yep. The, um, so anyways, what I started, and actually this, I, I forget who even gave it to me. They were like, oh, there's like marketing qualified leads and sales qualified leads. And salespeople always have different criteria than the marketing people. The marketing people are like, no, no, no. He's in your target market. He's, you, yeah. like, you just can't sell him because there's something wrong with you. And then the salesperson's like, yeah, it goes way deeper than that. And there's a lot of other things that um, need to go on. Oh, somebody's raising your hand. You know, if you, it's probably best uh, if you use the chat if you have questions. And I'm sorry, I'm using my new remote tool. Okay, so, uh, but if you have a question, uh, go ahead and send the chat and I'll answer that there. Um, but thank you for raising your hand. I, and I apologize. If I had my uh, super assistant in here, maybe. <laughs> Somebody who actually knew what was going on. I know Bill's just here to, to look good. The, uh, so the marketing. But by breaking this up, right, if we're getting started, where is it that we, if you don't even view your marketing along these lines, then you kind of have to, uh, marketing automation is, is a challenge. Um, if you can start to say like, no, 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 these are marketing, like this is the handoff between sales qualified leads and marketing qualified yeah. leads. Um, and what we're getting into is you probably have some, a bit of a process in place and then your marketing is ready to uh, be automated. Otherwise just start where you are. So when I look at this, you know, if you have a tool like, oops, um, MailChimp, if I do this again. Uh, inside of MailChimp, they have, you know, if you're using MailChimp Constant Contact, they have these automation tools, they call them, but it's really, uh, it, it's, they're a little bit more advanced autoresponders. Remember you used to send an email in and <laughs> actually you used to send a fax somewhere and then they would send you the fax back. Sure, right? or, yeah, sure. Uh, there's some sort of autoresponder uh, activity that was going on. Uh, same thing, I signed up for a newsletter, the newsletter uh, it confirms my- Yep, thank you for signing up. Yeah, thank you for signing up. Here's some good content. Well, with these tools, you can get a little more sophisticated. And so when you click into the automation inside of MailChimp, you'll see they've got some pre-built campaigns for you, but basically they can help you track who's on your website, who's signed up. So you could say, Bill Matern uh, has reached out, he's identified himself, he's become a subscriber to my newsletter. And now when he, reaches the, uh, is it safe to send? No, it is not. 
great question. Is it safe to send all emails to all the randomly collected leads without their consent? You should get consent with everybody that you're gonna send them an email before you uh, set them onto something, especially like a campaign. Because the one bad thing about a robot is a robot doesn't know what consent is, right? A robot, once you get started, will just continue to click through. And if you're gonna send a bunch of you know, unwanted emails, you run the risk of getting, hit, yeah, hitting the spam, spam uh, police and uh, getting your IP blacklisted or your domain blacklisted or something terrible like that. So inside of your collection efforts, right, with what we try to help companies with is get, you know, be helpful so that people reach out to you. But what if they all gave their emails on a public page so anyone can email? them. Now you're getting into the in-between. Uh, so it's a public page. So you're saying that just because I put my email address on my Chamber of Commerce listing that I am open to receiving email or uh, that is the question. Um, if I put them on, if I put the shoe on my foot, do I want to receive those things? Um, unsolicited, untargeted email is never welcome. But if it's unsolicited and it's targeted, every once in a while, some of those things are interesting. Right, right. Um, eh, I don't know that I can, I mean, I, I don't know that I can give you a hard and fast rule on that uh, because what we would probably do is we would uh, test, that's what we do is we test everything around here. And, and oops, go ahead, Bill. Well, I, and I was just, you know, in our uh, data side where we see a lot of email, it's just uh, email by itself of, of cold email or, or uh, they signed up for to receive third party and, and maybe they're not familiar with you. Um, it's still, it's, it's a very tough gig in, in, in getting the type of responses I think that people want. The expectation is very high, but the results are all very low in the sense of what the outcome is going to be or what, what the response is going to be. So it's, you know, it is, um, the ideal situation is they sign up knowing who you are. Right, they sign up to oh, your absolutely. newsletter, right? They sign up to your name, they sign up, yeah, I'm interested in this, of what you're offering, or they sign up on your website, um, as opposed to just a public site that they may be getting bombarded with other third party offers. So Mubaris, I don't know if, we, if we're answering your question uh, to your satisfaction, but uh, I think we've kind of talked around it. Okay. Don't, don't you? I can't read that, oh, I can't <laughs> see that, sorry. <laughs> Let's say I'll give you their emails on a, right. So anyone can email. They're getting a lot. And it's it, it's just, you know. Yeah, that is a good point. They're getting a lot of email. And the tough part is how much is getting into their inbox? Um, yeah, so he did ask the follow-up question. Marez, thank you. It's a, so can we send them the first promotional email without their consent? And in that email, we put the form where they can sign up for all future emails. So. Just as an aside, I actually hired a company who does this uh, and had promoted this because I've always wondered the same thing. Like, I know it gets done, so I don't know if the question is can we or can't we, it gets done. The question is, is it effective? And it was interesting because so these people were sending out uh, for a book promotion. We were giving away a free book, so people needed to receive the email, go to the website, and then get this book. And it's a, it was a real, it's a real book. It wasn't like one of these uh, scammy, <laughs> ebooks, which we've, uh, we haven't written the scammy ones, but we've written little <laughs> ones where it's just like, is it really worth anything? This is like a really, you know, like a $20 uh, hardcover book. And it was interesting to see what the responses were because it did generate responses. But then uh, when I look back at the, the, the click through rates and the, um, open. the, the actual opens and, and even the people came to the website, it was terrible. Like yeah, it was, right. it became very expensive and it didn't compete at all. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, you're asking me for permission on something, uh, whereas, so is it okay for the email without consent? I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, at the same time, like all marketing techniques, you should probably test it. Um, and talk to your attorney. And, and talk to your attorney because uh, it is, people who uh, did not ask for your email can say that it's spam. So, uh, but we're gonna move on to the next thing. 
So uh, if you have a tool sitting in that you've invested in and uh, like Keep, which was Infusionsoft, Entreport, any of these tools, what you can do is beyond just the email collection that you've been doing, if you look at this, this is actually came from Infusionsoft and you can see a list of activities in that second box that I kind of blocked out for that. I blocked out the client's information, but you can see a bunch of activities that were happening and those things are all happening without a human being uh, present, right? It's, uh, they actually have a job campaign that they set up because they got so many job inquiries. So it, it, uh, next steps, they kind of put next steps in to see uh, who's interested and then uh, literature requests. And so inside there, but none of this stuff, this is all their marketing qualified. They have a marketing qualified lead process that we're putting together. And it looks like this, which is uh, as opposed to what MailChimp does, which is uh, basic if then, this you can get a lot more granular, right? You've got a bunch of uh, feeds that can come in from Facebook or Twitter or uh, the websites, the blogs, and then they go into uh, where they're reaching out to the information. You can see the little bottom drop down is a double opt-in. So Mubarak uh, is back to the question. So a lot of people ask this question too. I noticed MailChimp dropped the double opt-in requirement, which was interesting because they were just such staunch component, right, uh, right, components of it. Right. Um, I, most of our customers still use double opt-in um, on their web forms because just because I requested the information doesn't necessarily mean that I want to open myself up to full automated. Right. And so we do separate there and we say uh, the difference between um, like an automated campaign is you, you, you better probably opt it in because you're going to be getting a bunch of emails um, versus reaching out to a, somebody who has request information. Right. 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 So that's how we kind of delineate it. Um, if you use a tool like green rope, the, theirs looks very similar. This is a customer journey. So they've got the nice like line rope that you can uh, do your if then logic on. Right. So if, if uh, they came in through here and they go through there, Oh, going to go leads is being directed to go to google.com. Uh, go leads is a us based. And so if you're out of the country, um, it will do that. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and then, uh, this is what, uh, sharp string looks like. And so sharp string, a little bit more of a decision tree, uh, flow chart that you can, um, that you can play with. So, what is the difference between these tools? You know, like, uh, it's like anything. A, a, sim a simple autoresponder is uh, pretty easy to put together and cheap. It's, it's marketing automation technically, but it's not very smart art marketing automation. And then these other tools uh, allow you to be a lot smarter about it, right? Based on what kind of content people are consuming, what they're doing when they come back for visits. Very good. Yeah, so, yeah. so going back to the, I mean, MailChimp kind of does this, but on here is we've sent you some information, we've introduced you to other parts of our company, and then you went and visited it, and then you hit the pricing page, for instance. That would set up. So I mean, we know navigation a little bit. We know yeah, maybe there's we, interest. And maybe we start getting into like, is this just uh, qualified for marketing or is this also qualified for, uh, for sales yet? And so maybe it is uh, once they've, uh, if you could get on the websites, if once they could pull account of who it is that they're targeting, right. and then uh, they, they have, they've met these other criteria, then the email goes to the sales rep, and the sales rep reaches out to them directly um, on there. So, another question. Oh, it's the same question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but basically, when we talk about all this stuff, what Bill had alluded to earlier is automation needs a process. The key to all this, to be able to use any of these tools, is you have to have a process to automate. What happens a lot is these new tools or technologies come out and then we say, well, that sounds really awesome and I wish we could do that. And then we put it together and the end result is something that, when I say it's less than human, it, that's what it is because it really wasn't organic inside of your company. It wasn't anything you ever did before. And now um, you're, you're pushing information out, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So, and uh, generally it's like, uh, oh, we just kind of, we made this contact because we needed to, as opposed to things that we really do. <laughs> we don't really do business this way. Versus if you start with what is my process and get that down, like this is how I want everything to work. And then 
you go ask the marketplace which tool is best for what I want to do. As we saw, there's 10,000 tools out there. Yeah. And then you can uh, end up with more success, right? Don't and, fit your process into a, don't cram it into a tool yeah. that's already, make the tool fit your process. Exactly. Right? Uh, we have a, my son is involved in a startup and it's interesting to listen to him because he's like, oh, you know, if people would just do what they, you know, what we tell them to do with our technology, everything would work better. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just like, oh, don't, don't do that. It's going to fail. Like if you force them into it and it doesn't work, then they'll never blame themselves, right? We would never blame ourselves. We're going to say, I think we told our sons that we're going to sell the technology doesn't work is what we're going to say. And uh, the reality is, is that's not it at all. So here's the whole thing. It takes time, right? Uh, if you want to implement that marketing technology, uh, marketing automation in your business to get the benefits of it, you're probably going to go through a regular transition curve and this transition curve, there is a plunge. And the plunge is like Bill said, when you're, uh, you're trying to gather all the content, you're trying to uh, write the pieces, you're trying to set the website up, you're trying to do all those things. It's entirely possible that marketing automation decreases productivity before it increases it, but you'll come out the other side. I've done this. This is my, uh, Greg, right? What we were just telling, I was trying to tell my son, don't do this is I'm just going to tell, I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer. When you give people the answer, it rarely works and they don't learn anything. And so in gotcha. many ways you could say you're dumber yeah. if you just implement what it is that uh, somebody else has already told you is a best practice, right? The best practices that don't get implemented correctly inside your company are not best practices. Well, best practice as well as you still don't learn anything from it. You right. mean, you, you, or you don't value what somebody just told you. Well, no, we did this, this is, you, you end up not valuing it if you're not taking part in it. Yeah, and, right? and so you don't work through. So right. this, we just want to wallow long enough in that you know unproductive zone to right. kind of get everybody engaged in it, so that we can move forward and they can start asking questions about the best way to yep. use this technology. And uh, and your people will come up with reasons. You know, the, oh, if we could just do this again, like that that hiring piece. Uh, we were designing marketing campaigns, and then the hiring manager was like, "I heard you're doing this thing with like automation." And I am overwhelmed. I get way too many applications. I need to be able to sort through them. And there was a set of set she could describe, you know, here's the 13 steps I go through. And I was like, oh, we can automate, like this tool could probably automate six right. of those. Right. It just saves her a ton of time. Yep. And uh, their net result, yeah, they've, that's actually a great case study. I should pull that one up. Because what's interesting is that the number of people that start the process, we had to put together an application online. Yeah. They couldn't just request one. And once you put that application, they didn't want to fill it out. They just wanted to send their resume which you can do through Indeed and sure, some of these other sure. tools. Yep. Um, so the number of applications dropped like dramatically, right. but almost they hire almost 100% of the people that come through it. Wow. Because if the people take the time, I'm sure they're missing some opportunities. Sure. But it's like anything else, right? It's like we're after the net, the, the net result. So anyways, what do we do with all this information? You may ask, uh, Bill would ask. So, so what now? Um, at the very least, on your websites, uh, one of the things that you'll need with, to work with uh, suspects and marketing qualified leads is good tracking, right? Uh, driving people through your website. We're working with a company and he's got uh, a group that's gonna be calling on 40,000 prospects. So they've got a, a ton of prospects that they feel are very qualified and they're gonna be calling out to them. And so he's like, I don't need, uh, the website doesn't really matter. But it does, right? Yeah. There's uh, people are going to be going there to sign up. Uh, they're going to be directing people to the website to sign up. There's going to be people who go to the website and disappear. So it's a, a good idea to learn and, and put this net in place because at some point down the road, and he knows this, once he gets through the, the quick, the first cut of going through that list, then everything's going to get harder yeah. over time. But if he can remarket to the people that have, uh, that have already started on the process, he's got a better chance of developing a sales qualified lead and a, a sale. Very little is siloed anymore, right? I mean, yeah. we're just, it's just, we're touching everything. Maybe we're, you know, I'm, I'm always amazed getting back to hiring and things like that. I'm, I'm always amazed at people checking out our Facebook page or people checking out our Twitter and, and just, I mean, they're touching everything that we are a part of. And so it's the same thing. If these 40,000 people being called, 
uh, you know what, just send me some information. I mean, they're going to get right. all kinds of answers. Right. And so that infrastructure is just so important to, okay, how, what, what are all the things they could possibly touch that I could control? You know, it's going to be the website. It's going to be landing pages. It's going to be, it's going to be social media. It's, you know, and are, is, is everything saying the same? You know, do you have various messages out there and it's just going to cause confusion or is it, is it all kind of saying, you know, the same message and what, the, what you want them to do? Right. Is that right? No, it is. Yeah. You looked at me like I was. What yeah. do you say? I actually you <laughs> created another question that has nothing to do with marketing okay. automation, but you just reminded me of something I need to do. Um, and then uh, if we think of our, our automation in terms of suspect, suspects, marketing qualified leads, sales qualified leads, and automate what you have processes for already. Um, that's really the yeah, best next yeah. step that I can think of um, b even before. And again, it's before we get to technology. If you have any tools on hand, there's a good chance that they have some element of uh, automation that will help your business already. Um, I think in terms of going back to that first example we used, just follow up. Right. Um, like anybody who, sent, who signs up for a newsletter, how many people do that? Oh, I get like three or four a month. You know, it's not a, it's not a ton. I get three or four a month. Well, wouldn't it be nice to, if they got an email, like a warm welcome or uh, even anybody asked them a question? I used to do this thing where it was an automated autoresponder, which was thanks for signing up. And what questions, you know, do, like I ask everybody these three questions and it was three questions. The problem was you had to turn it off because it was like, it, it was a great process when I had time. But once lots of people started signing up for the newsletter, you couldn't answer the questions. Well, and I go back to your... Uh, sales manager or, or the director of marketing yeah. who you sat by, you know, these are great leads, right? Okay. There may be great leads, but I don't know time. You know, you want them. Yeah. I got to hit a number this month. Oh, absolutely. Right. Right. And the problem is we don't know time and this is where automation comes into play. So not only just, it keeps in touch for three or four times, but it keeps in touch. Right. For years. For years. I mean, when we do an email campaign, I'm always amazed people who have never bought from us in the 20 years and then just, Hey, I've been getting your email for the past, you know, eight, 10 years. Yeah. I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. <laughs> finally ready to talk about this. And it's just, how much is it? Oh, <laughs> I'm not well, ready anymore. <laughs> well, it's just, wow. What have you been doing? You know I mean? It's just, it's, it's, uh, so we can control a lot, but what we can't control is, is time and, and the time of the suspect turning into a prospect and, and then finally into a customer it's on their time. Yeah. And the robot helps that automation helps just keeping building brand, keeping that brand name. Even if you don't read my newsletter, even if you don't, you know, you got an email from go leads, right. you got an email from US farm date, whatever the case may be. Right. Lead gen comes. It's good stuff. So any other questions? I know. I thanks uh, to Mubaris for asking the questions about the technical sending of emails. I hope we answered that well. Um, any other questions, any other things that popped up into your head on this? No, I mean, it's, it's I, what I have found in 30 years of this business. Um, I'm, I, you know, I go back to as a business owner and I'm talking to business owners all the time. I find it interesting that business owners, man, they are involved in product development. They, and I'm really in, in the smaller companies, obviously, um, product development. They're involved in operations. They're involved in, in manufa the, the manufacturing. They're, they're involved in HR and sales. And it's, it's always interesting how maybe it's just me in being in this industry. Is there some bias? <laughs> <laughs> but it seems marketing. And maybe it's because uh, little time is given to marketing. Because probably out of all of them, it, it's hard to quantify. It's hard to give guarantees. You can't give guarantees. You know, yeah. you do a, you can do a commercial. You can do, I have no idea how many people are going to buy, you know? How, here's a, we've got a new question. Okay. Uh, Mubaris, you've been so active. Thank you. Uh, is email still the best platform to target people? Um, and what's the second best platform after email? Well, I guess the second question assumes that we were going to agree that email was the best platform to target people. What do yeah. you think about that? Is that how... I would not say that, right? I mean, I, I just, you know, it's, it's so much depends on what it is. What's the product? What's yeah, the price? What, what is your selling? What's your sales processes? 
Um, we've got a little grid that we walk people through that is around like the, the how complicated is your product to a customer? Like how complicated would they say it is? Not how complicated it is to you. And then what is their budget authority inside the company? Um, and maybe for a, a simple product that uh, fits into a budget that uh, somebody has control of. I used to work at a place where I had a, a when it started, it was a much bigger credit card, but at the end it was like 500 bucks. And so if you fit, if you solve my need and you fit within 500 bucks um, and you sent me an email, that may be a great way to market to me there. Um, but my budget could be pulled at any time. So uh, a much more complicated thing, a software system, a marketing automation system. Um, I don't know that email is, it should be, it could be in the mix. I don't know that I'd put it as, uh, number one, but I need a lot more information. I just don't know if you can give one marketing tactic um, so much weight that you say, wow, yeah, that's what we need to do. You know, now maybe, but again, I go back to, there's just, what's, what's, how are we going to touch this person multiple times yeah. to move them through the cycle? It's from, from moving from suspect to a prospect, from marketing qualified lead to an actual sales lead. I mean, again, I, I go back to, they are, the, the, we are researchers. We are all researchers. And we are going, we are doing so much research prior to talking to a human being. And it's not just receiving an email. Maybe that's a start, whatever the case may be. But it's also, I'm going to the website. I'm going to social media. I'm going to, I'm just going, I'm wherever, you know, wherever that name is, can I find, am I getting reviews? Am I seeing reviews? Am I, you know, right. I, I, I'm just checking on everything. What happened? The problem is you always talk about this is we give too much weight to the last touch. Right. Right. We don't look at, yeah, I know, but I spent, you know, I, I spent nine months, right. right. Talking to people, Talking to, you know. Right. One of the reasons I put uh, tracking as the first thing to put down is because that is. Yeah, right. That's what we see the most is once we get these tools hooked up and you can see that uh, most advanced marketing automation tools will track IP addresses. And then eventually that person signs up for a newsletter that eventually that person uh, fills out a product request form, gets a presentation and becomes a sale. And then we go backwards. If we're not careful, it's that last thing. Oh, I saw your ad. I clicked on the right. Google ad. Right. I got the email. Um, but then when you get that full life and you're like, oh my gosh, this person's been banging around for two years. Right. What are they even doing? Um, but building infrastructure. Right. I mean, it could be and, on their end. And then it's, can you well, and then it's like what content originally got them going. Right. And Right. But a decision, right? It's knowing that decision process. What is the journey the customer is going to go on? Um, getting that down. And where does that come from? Uh, the most effective marketing technique that uh, is one thing that marketers hate to do, which is go talk to the customers directly and ask a lot of questions about how it is that they made their decisions. It's frustrating because they don't always know. Um, but at the same time, the more you ask that question, um, the better it is. The best marketing technique? The one that grabs the attention. <laughs> right? The one that works. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, especially today, it's just, you need a mix of. You do. I feel like we, we one does. The second best platform after email. Um, I don't know if you're looking for a particular answer. I don't know how to. The best I wish I could, quant man, if we could quantify this, I feel like we'd be a lot further along. Yeah, probably. <laughs> right. Right. We'd be on CNBC or something. Yeah. Uh, even when it's a perfect solution, it's still long conversations. Um, yeah, I wish I could quantify it. I just, again, I just, it, it goes back to. Yeah, we use a, our complete we, infrastructure. Our, we have direct mail. It's right. effective. I love, uh, we get a lot out of uh, search. Uh, yeah. uh, targeting keyword phrases where people are bringing their intent to the search engines. We still get a lot of uh, activity from that. Yeah. Referrals. Referrals. Yeah. I, number one is always going to be like the very best marketing technique is a peer to peer. Yeah. Right. Referral. Right. right. And then below that, if you can be a recognized expert in something that's probably the next, and then you start getting into those cold outreach yeah. uh, things, you know, who's got the biggest idea, uh, the follow the money was always a good one. I think I just sent that to a, a group of guys. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, make sure you follow the money. So I hope we're getting close to at least answering your question, but thank you for asking it. Um, we do need to pop on. This is how we can help at Lead Gen Compass, the things that we do. 
we do a lot of this advisory work. So when you ask like, what is the best platform and what's the best way to do things? Um, we help you. Uh, thank Great. you. Uh, I'm, I'm glad he's, uh, he said we answered his questions. Oh, good. Um, we help with uh, advisory on what to do, which tools uh, you should consider. Um, we offer some of those ourselves internally, right? Uh, we help build that with campaigns regardless of which tool you're using, even if it is something simple like constant contact, which we I, I personally struggle with it, but we can, we can make things work if we can help you get through the process. That's really, we kind of become process uh, consultants at the, on that point. Uh, people hire us, we have uh, in-house people so we can augment your staff using your existing tools, uh, management of your existing tools where you just outsource it to us completely. And then um, at leadgencompass.com uh, slash packages dash pricing, you can see our guaranteed lead program because marketing automation uh, doesn't really show up in our traffic program or our inquiry program, which hopefully the website helps explain what those are, but it is part of our guaranteed leads program, which is when people are saying, we don't want any marketing qualified leads or we're not going to give you any credit for those. We only want the ones that are like on the path to buying and whatever that is, right. like within our 60 or 90 day sales cycle. Um, we got we have to do a lot of work. Um, it's our, it's, it, it's become our, you know, our premium program. Um, we can help you a lot of ways, even if we don't uh, help with that necessarily. We can, I, I look at a lot of our struggles are probably very similar to yours. Uh, because we're always looking, we're always looking for lead generation ideas, right? We're always seeing, <laughs> we're doing the same thing. We're always finding, and we do webinars. So we do webinars. I mean, this is one of the things. Um, and it's just, we've gone through a lot of this. We've uh, hopefully have, have um, uh, carved a path somewhat for people who are new to it. And so we can bring some insight and certainly empathetic to budgets. We know what we know we worked with small X hundred dollar budgets to insurance company budgets. Yeah. You know, we are, <laughs> What's just, your thing? we are, we are just, uh, uh, we have an idea what you're going through because we, we've gone through it or are going through it as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you for attending and, uh, thanks for your questions and uh, hopefully this has been helpful. You will receive, uh, a, a link with the recording of this. I'll clean it up a little bit. And then, um, yeah, we may even have somebody reach out to you via the phone um, and, <laughs> and ask for, uh, ask you to, if you're interested in our uh, a free trial of our service. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for and, joining uh, us. Have a great day. I'm ending the meeting for all.